I'm going to try and explain what I mean by decentralizing compassion, by explaining how I think creating services rather than systems has meant that we've taken away from many of our professionals opportunities to show compassion and actually make people well. And let's not forget that one of the oaths that you take as a doctor or that you believe in is to first do no harm. So let me see if this situation is familiar to any of you and let's see if you think it's first doing no harm for the doctor involved and whether it's fair for that doctor to have to make these choices. Let me give an example of somebody who comes to A&E as an alcoholic. Perhaps they've been drinking too much for a long time, they've got some mental health problems, but those mental health problems aren't quite enough for a service to get involved. And especially if alcohol is involved, the service will be reticent and dual diagnosis services are quite difficult to get hold of. So an alcoholic who's been drinking too much and having some of the familiar problems that some alcoholic people have, falling over, injuring themselves, using A&E, using ambulances, becoming more lonely, becoming more isolated, relying on fewer and fewer people to take care of them. Now those people get more and more tired, they need respite. On a particular evening, this person ends up in a hospital at A&E. And the doctor has to decide whether this person can stay in overnight. Now what he can see is that this person is really not very well, is very lonely, very isolated, and has two exhausted people in the room with him who've been caring for him. Now the doctor doesn't stop becoming the doctor for the other two people simply because those people have been called a patient. Surely that can't be the case if first do no harm means what it means. If you're stood in a room and you're a doctor with three people, you can't simply decide that you only care about the well-being of one person because they're your patient. The other two people have feelings and health too. But what doctors are forced to do is say, well, the only person that I'm allowed to really treat here is the person who's declared as a patient to me. The other people in the room are not under my care. And even though doctors are great and they will try and show compassion to family members, the reality is that if the alcoholic guy who perhaps needs help, perhaps needs support, perhaps a night away from home, a night away for his family would be respite, well, he won't get into a bed in the hospital on that basis. He'll only get on the basis of passing some tests, ticking some boxes, and the doctor being able to, in some cases, skew his judgment or her judgment and fit them in with a service that isn't quite right. But of course, if a doctor was simply allowed to first do no harm, the first thing he'd do is say to the two people with him, you two go home, you need rest, you're not gonna be very well if you don't do that. I'll take care of this guy because I'm a doctor and he needs someone to help him be well. And then the doctor would say what this person needs at the very first and the very least, maybe is a night in hospital, a night away from it. And I'm going to prescribe him that because I'm allowed to. At the moment, they simply can't do that. Now, you can tell me that the systems have been created because we haven't got enough beds. But you and I also know that many people are pushed into services which don't really meet their needs, but are the closest thing that fits for them. If I had my way and we decentralised compassion, doctors, teachers, nurses and other professionals ought to be free to use their professional skills to keep people as well as they can, to teach people the joy of learning and to stop teaching people that in order to get a service, you need to learn how to be a good patient. You need to understand the rules of the service, tick the boxes for their assessment and make sure that you follow the rules when you're in it. The same doesn't go the other way. If, for example, you're in a mental health service and you keep cancelling appointments and you're unreliable, you're liable to be discharged. If it happens the other way around, not so much. Our system is literally taking away from doctors and nurses and teachers and other professionals the ability to show compassion and the ability to use their skills. Those services clearly, obviously, aren't doing the job that they're supposed to do. And I think we could change that.